This is Abe Pretanzer from CinemaDailyUS.com, and I'm thrilled to be speaking with Nana Mensa about her film, Queen of Glory. How are you today, Nana? I'm great. How are you, Abe? Good, good. I'm really excited to get a chance to revisit this film. I saw it, I guess, a little more than a year ago now uh, when it was at Tribeca. I'm sure it's been a great journey. Um, what was it like to premiere at Tribeca? I mean, premiering at Tribeca was super emotional, right? Because it was the first U.S. festival to come back after the pandemic. And so our screening was like, uh, you know, sold out, which was amazing. And uh, but the seats were like socially distanced. It was outdoors. It was at sunset, which sounds beautiful, except for then you got the sun glare on the screen for like a good 15 minutes in the middle of a pretty short film. And so um, our runtime is like 80 minutes. So um, it was, uh, so that part was like, oh, huh, okay. Not how I saw my Tribeca premiere going, but the, but the emotion of all of it, of everything that we had been through, everything New York had been through in the past two years, um, canceling two Tribeca festivals uh, back to back, and then finally, finally, finally doing it and being there and being, it was, it was, oh man, I'm like getting goosebumps just thinking about it. It was, it was like maybe the best day of my life. Don't tell my husband. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, I, I like how it's, I was, I was looking a look at the, the press notes again. I like how it's described as a follow-up on the classic immigrant's tale. Yeah. So this, from what I understand, this is, this is a story that you felt you hadn't seen before on screen, right? Right. Yeah, I just think, you know, I'm Ghanaian, my parents immigrated to the States from, from Ghana. And I think one of the things that was like uh, really interesting was that whenever I saw immigrants on screen, it was very much, they were like super disenfranchised, um, you know, very much being taken advantage of a lot of times. Um, there was a lot of like misery and, 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 and everything was quite fraught. And that was not um, my parents' experience. Of course, I don't want to detract from their struggles. Of course, like there were, there was, they, you know, uh, survived economic hardship, you know, banal racism, all that stuff. They did, they did do those things and I don't want to like downplay them, but they also have some hilarious stories about like, you know, just the foibles of, of immigrating to a new country and like, you know, the miscommunications and, you know, the different cultural expectations and whatnot. And so I think of my parents as, um, kind of joyful immigrants, you know, they, they came to the US for economic prosperity reasons and, and, um, you know, they did well and worked really hard. And, and so they are happy people, you know, and I think that there is something about that, that um, I hadn't seen. So I just kind of wanted to, you know, play up on that and look at that trajectory and then look at the children of that trajectory and how they approach um, you know, straddling both worlds um, because their parents came from one place, they were raised in another place, and, you know, sometimes there's some clash. This film did remind me of one film I've seen, and that's because you you were involved in it, and that's Farewell Amour, which is obviously a very different film, and it's a completely different story in terms of each generation's relationship with the idea of assimilation and all that. Um, but I just think there are so many stories of immigrants. And I think what's interesting is there's a, a striving in some sense for universality, which shouldn't take away from someone's individual experience, but instead to show people that there really is more that connects us than divides us in a lot of ways, even though we have these very singular experiences. Is there, yeah. do you think there's a delicate balance in there though, and not losing sight of what you're trying to tell? Well, yes, I think obviously that everything needs to serve story. Um, and I think um, because, you know, and I say that obviously to your audience, probably being mostly film appreciators, but also probably some filmmakers in there. Um, and, and so it, it has to be about the story. And that's why I think it's a little bit troubling to get into like kind of mission driven art, because sometimes you do lose the, you know, you lose the plot. And our plot is like very simple. And our story is very simple. But in that simplicity, I got because it's, it's a framework people understand and they can kind of like, there's a shortcut there that then I can do all the other things that I was doing, which talking about like immigrant communities and talking about, um, you know, toxic masculinity as per the West African, you know, man. And, um, and, and so those were kinds of some of the things that I wanted to talk about um, 
and and so I did so within the framework of of that story. But yeah, you have to you do have to walk a, a bit of a fine line of like not giving over too much to what it is that you're trying to do, rather than just like doing it clearly and succinctly. I think that's the that's the real goal. I do appreciate the infusion of humor. I was watching the trailer again and just that ending moment from the trailer where, you know, somebody comes and says, oh, I see it's just just your family here. It's like, no, just everyone's everyone's black. And so <laughs> I, I, I'm sure moments like that stem from real life experiences of microaggressions. Yeah, sure. You know, and it's like and I just think that there's like that version of like being very like upset about it. And of course that happens and and, and, it, and it can wound, but it also can just be like, oh, you know, like, you know, and so I, I just wanted to get some of that, like, get some of those shades, you know, I just think there's a lot, there's a lot. Yeah. And how much are you like your main character and where, where do things really diverge? Oh my God, Abe, not at all. I'm like, okay, I don't have a PhD. I have a great relationship with my father. My mother is still alive. Um, you know, I, like in, in, in terms of the film, it is not autobiographical at all. I would say that there's an emotional truth perhaps of like, of getting at like what it's like to be, you know, in between these two places, like not feeling wholly American because like my parents didn't speak English at home. Um, you know, we ate different food, like things like that. But then like, going to Ghana and like my grandmother calls me Oberni. Oberni means like foreigner, like, like, you know, like whatever. So it's like, you know, it's like, well, then where do I fit, you know? And so I think that that part is a hundred percent autobiographical um, between Sarah and myself, between the character Sarah and myself. But um, I think for me, um, you know, it was, it was important to kind of like put more differences than similarities because I did want to play somebody, right? Like I didn't want to play myself. Um, I don't think that her reaction to grief would be my reaction to grief. You know, like she very much disassociates because she's a scientist, she's a clinician. So she's very like, you know, she's not really like, I'm a little bit more in tune with my own emotions and can, you know, like, and so I think that there's definitely a difference there, but she and I are both, um, struggling to figure out what it means to be African and American, you know. Did you always know that you wanted to direct this? And was there ever a time when you maybe would only have directed it and not start in it? Exactly the opposite. I never thought I would direct it. Um, I wrote it and then was like, okay, I'll act in it if I need to. And then I needed to. So then I, I was acting and writing. And then I was talking to a, just a couple directors, just trying to like, you know, start that process. And, um, and everybody really wanted to make it a real downer. And I was like, this film is not a downer. I just want to be clear. Like, like there is a lot, like, yes, it's, it centers around the death of a parent, which is, you know, indubitably a downer. Um, maybe in some rare cases, it's not a downer, but that's a different film. Um, but like, but for this character, it is a huge downer. And I, and then everything that comes after that is like about like how ludicrous death is and how much the, the things that we have to do to prepare for death or the things that we have to do after death, what we ask of people to perform in terms of like funeral rites, like the rights, you know, the death rites is also like crazy because you are being, you are changed on a cellular level by losing a parent. And so, and so then to just like have to basically plan a wedding while you're grieving, it's crazy, it's insane, it's insane. But, you know, and often that task falls to, you know, your, your daughters. And so I think that there's a lot about gender in the film that's like a little bit um, under the surface, um, but that's really, you know, kind of what we're talking about. Was the experience of directing for the first time what you expected? Huh. I don't know. I don't remember what I expected. It was too long ago. I think I like that part of my brain like is melted. Uh, but like, I, I don't remember what I expected, but it was uh, really hard. And I definitely couldn't have done it without the support of my producers. Um, you know, because we, you know, you have to be extremely organized when you're a low resource film that also like, uh, you know, where your lead is also your director is also your writer. And so because of that, like we didn't, we couldn't, we had to be very um, 
economical in our in our use of time and our use of like whatever. So we were really, um, uh, yeah. So we were really disciplined in that regard, and I think that's the only way we were able to make it happen. And in in that part, that discipline, setting up that architecture to be able to succeed and get our shots and make our day and whatever. Um, that was a hundred percent my producer. So I'm really, really grateful to them for that. And you mentioned the short runtime of the film before. Is that something that people like producers and other people like these days or do they want longer films? I don't know. I mean, literally we're like the length of like an episode of Stranger Things. So I don't know. <laughs> like, so, so yeah, I don't know which way, you know, the, 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 the waves are churning in, in that regard. But I just knew that we had shot more and we had shot in a in, in in like two chunks, um, because we actually you know we had funding issues. Like we thought there was a big funder who was supposed to come on board who didn't, so we stopped mm-hmm. production. And in that time that we stopped production, I looked at what we had, and um and I did you know kind of prune and and really like make the story like get to the 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 nut of what the story was about. And that was really important to me. And I'm really glad, weirdly, that ended up, that that had ever happened. Because if it hadn't happened, it would have been a different story. It would have been a longer story. But I don't think it would have been as successful a story. So, so you, Yeah, of course. I know you've toured at other festivals uh, since Tribeca. Has the reaction been different based on where you've been? It's been um, really wonderful. We've been at so many great festivals. Um, and uh across the u.s and and also abroad like so you know like uh there was a couple that i couldn't go to because of scheduling conflicts but like taping an an intro video for folks for my japanese premiere is like amazing you know what i mean like it's like this film was playing in japan that's crazy and so um so that's been really wonderful but like the the ones that i have been able to attend the thing that struck me is that like folks from China, folks from, you know, first generation folks from China or, or Bangladesh or Ecuador, or Argentina being like, oh, this story is really familiar to me. And it's like, that's wonderful because when we were initially seeking funding for this film and we're like reaching out to folks and being like, hey, can you please like support us? Can you please come on board as an investor? And we got so many no's. And a lot of times the reason behind the no was that they felt that the film was a little too specific and that it wouldn't have appeal to a larger audience. So they were not sure how that would compute in their like algorithm or, you know, their ROI or algorithm. And so, um, and because, and so that's been the thing, maybe because of that experience that has just been, I was like, is anybody going to get this? That's not Ghanaian American. And so, and I've been totally, it's, been 100% true that everyone gets it. And that's been so life affirming even, like it's affirming for your art, but it's also affirming for your life, you know, that we we are all experiencing very similar things just as human beings. That's amazing. And so what's next? Ah, well, I'm in London right now. I'm working on a new show called The Diplomat with Carrie Russell and Rufus Sewell. Um, I'm an actor on that. I'm not, I'm not doing anything behind the camera. And then, um, uh, you know, we open at BAM and the Angelica uh, this weekend, so I'm flying to New York tomorrow and uh, and then going to L.A. for our L.A. premiere, and then we'll be at the Lemley Glendale from the 22nd of July. And so I'm feeling um, like I can't even think about what's next because I've got to get through this week, but I've got some irons in the fire. I'm developing um, some shows with HBO Max and Amazon and Showtime, so so hopefully you'll be hearing from me again soon. I'd love to do another feature, but I'm 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 waiting for the like the epiphany moment uh, that will help kind of like focus what that is because I think there's a lot of things I want to to talk about, a lot of stories I want to tell, but you know, it's good to wait for the lightning bolt. And I do want to ask you about another show that I know you've been on, which is The Chair, which I really enjoyed. I had a chance to speak with Jay uh, Duplass a few weeks ago. He didn't seem to have any intel on a season two. I assume enough time has passed that it seems unlikely at this point. But is that the kind of thing you would you would go back to if you had the opportunity? Oh, 100%. Uh, working on that, I was actually just texting Holland Taylor like right before we started. And, um, and so like, I love those guys. I love that whole cast. And we shot that in January of 21 um, before any of us were vaccinated. And, you know, there's, a, there's several folks who are a little bit older 
um, who are a little bit older and I was pregnant at the time that I was shooting. And so like between my pregnancy and then like their senior age, like we were really careful, you know, because we weren't vaccinated. So that meant we didn't get to hang really. Like we got to do a lot of stuff on Zoom, but, and like we saw each other on set, but it was like face shield, you know, this, like, I mean, it was just so, it was so whatever, which I was happy to do. Listen, I'm not gonna be the one to kill Bob Balaban. You know, it's like, it's not gonna be me. So, um, but uh, I, I think in, inhabiting the character of, ya character of Yaz McKay was so fun and I would happily do it again. Um, not only because I love that character and would love to see what else she can get into, um, but also because I love those people and I want to work with them again with like less PPE. Of course, no, I, I hopefully see that would be great. Uh, for more great content, you can subscribe to the Cinema Daily US YouTube channel. Queen of Glory opens in New York City on July 15th with many other cities to follow. Thank you so much, Nana, today for speaking with me and can't wait to see what you do next. Oh, thanks so much, Abe. Talk to you soon.